everybody, Lexi Brown here, and welcome to my new digital talk show and podcast called Just Call Me, where I can have conversations with you. I know y'all love talking to me on Twitter. I love talking to y'all on Twitter. We have debates. We have great conversations. I talk to trolls. I talk to regular people. I talk to my friends. Now we can do all of that in one place um, online, and I'm really excited about it. Um, so moving forward, um, I'm going to be talking about all things sports and culture. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm going to have guests on here. I'm going to have my friends on here. Any type of person and conversations you guys want to have, just let me know and I'm going to make it happen for y'all because I want to talk about all, all things. And the best part about it is y'all cannot hide behind your Twitter fingers anymore. If y'all got something to say, call me up. I'm right here. Catch me outside. How about that? You know? <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. Um, it's going to be a really, really good time. We're going to be doing this once a week. Um, so I'm going to keep y'all updated to everything that's going on in the world. Um, so where we're going to start is, sad note, I know, um, but what is going on in the Asian community in the United States, unfortunately, there was an attack in Atlanta, Georgia, that left eight people dead, six of them Asian women. Um, that's a terrorist attack to me if I've ever seen one. My heart and prayers go out to the Asian community in the United States. You know, you have me as an ally. I know the black community can be an ally. Um, if we know anything about being targeted because of the way we look, um, we know it all. We're here for you guys. We stand with you guys. Um, Anybody that ever needs anything, needs to talk, needs to feel safe, anything. You have us, you can reach out. Um, I'm already on Twitter going to bat for y'all. Um, what's happening is not okay. It's white supremacy, it's racism, and it needs to end. Um, speaking of racism and sports, which is something that has come up a lot in the last few years, I think, um, was in Norman, Oklahoma, actually. So last week, uh, the Norman High School basketball team, the girls team, were playing in a playoff game. And during their national anthem, they decided to kneel, okay? Which is something that a lot of players in all different sports, white, black, Spanish, Asian, everybody has been doing that, right? So while they were kneeling, their announcer, his name is Matt Rowan. Okay, I'm gonna make sure we know his name. Matt Rowan, a grown ass man, said, he called him the N-word. And I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna curse on this for now, but anybody that knows me knows that once I get once I get going, the, the, the language goes with me, but I'm gonna really try my best to keep it PG-13 on here but he called them the N-word, which is unacceptable. Unacceptable. A group of, of <laughs> a group of 14 to 18 year old young girls. And um, I'm gonna read his apology. A very pathetic one, I'm gonna read it word for word. I will state that I suffer type one diabetes and during the game, my sugar was spiking. While not excusing my remarks, it is not unusual when my sugar spikes that I've become disoriented and often say things that are not appropriate as well as hurtful. I do not believe that I would have made such horrible statements absent my sugar spiking. Now, sir, we are what we're not gonna do is blame diabetes for your racism. What I can't stand about these these types of apologies is they always blame, they always blame something else. They blame their ignorance, they blame their health, they blame their mental health, they blame all these things instead of just saying what they really are. And you know, they might not be full blown 100% KKK racist, but they have some type of deep rooted dislike and hatred for people that don't look like them. And I, until people start addressing that about themselves, then there's not gonna be anything improved. And the fact that they allow that man to blame his diabetes, is hilarious to me. 
hilarious. But there's a happy ending to this story. The Norman High School girls basketball team won their state championship. And they kneeled again, as they should. And I hope Mr. Matt Rowan never gets to commentate a basketball or any sport event ever again in his life. Because, huh? It's 2021. Come on, sir. Get with the times. You're a racist in everybody's eyes now. I hope you know that. So your apology can go to hell. And so can you. All right, <laughs> moving on to something more exciting is the NCAA tournament. Um, women's college basketball has been so much fun to watch this year. I've been loving it. I am sad that my Duke girls decided to opt out, um, rightfully so. So, you know, I've kind of just been watching everybody, cheering for everybody. It's been really, really exciting. I'm really proud of all the teams in the, in, in the NCAA for navigating this COVID season. I know it was hard for some programs and some players to, you know, get through this, but we did it. We're in March. We get a March Madness, and we're all very, very excited about that. So we're going to break down some of the bracket a little bit. We're not going to, this is not a bracketology show. So um, we're just going to say the number one seeds are Connecticut, the what's new, uh, South Carolina, Stanford, and NC State. So that's really exciting. Particularly excited for NC State because they are in new territory. I'm very excited for them, my ACC sisters. I can cheer for y'all because I don't have a dog in the fight. So I'm gonna rock with NC State. I'm also gonna rock with Louisville because my girl Dana Evans has been hooping. I've been a fan of hers for years, ever since she was a little freshman to see her grow and blossom. I'm really excited for her. Um, I think the tournament is wide open and I think we're going to see a lot of upsets in the first and second rounds because they are in one central location. So, you know, if you don't know, in the women's tournament, the first and second rounds are played at the top 16 seeds home court. And because of COVID, we don't have that, which I don't think we should have that anyway. It'll make the tournament way more fun. So hopefully they can look into that in the future. But you're taking home court advantage away from everybody. So I'm I'm excited to see some upsets and of some one seeds, some two seeds, three. You know what? Everybody, I see more upsets happening this season than we have ever seen before. So I'm so excited for this weekend to start. Um, let's see. The bubble. Have fun, ladies. I know what that's like. Um, you'll get through it. Trust me. It'll be okay. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, I will say that one specific player I'm very, very excited to see is Iowa guard Caitlin Clark. She is a six foot point guard. She's averaging 26.7 points a game, 6.8 assists, and six rebounds. She goes to Iowa and she has not been getting any recognition for how she's been playing. And y'all, I know y'all know, I know that's, that's not what it's about. I get that. But the numbers she's putting up, she should be on ESPN every single day. And this weekend she finally will. Um, I looked at the bracket. They gonna meet up with UConn in the Sweet 16 if they both get there. So we're looking to a, a, a Paige Caitlin matchup, freshman Phenom matchup. So, I'm praying for that, and that better be on every ESPN channel if that does happen. But my picks for the tournament, like I said before, I'm going with my ACC sisters, so I'm rocking with NC State and Louisville. Don't prove me wrong, ladies. I'm rocking with y'all. I want to bring a championship back to the ACC. Um, sticking to a basketball uh, topic. I wasn't going to talk about him today. I was going to save this conversation for another show, but the way this man Damian Lillard played last night, I had to, I had to bring him up. I had to bring him up. Y'all know I am the biggest Damian Lillard fan. And y'all have known that if y'all have been following me, y'all have known that I've been his number one fan for years, years and years and years and years. And I think he is so underrated, so underappreciated. And I think now people are finally starting to see what type of player and person that he is. I like him because of obviously how he plays on the court, but how he carries himself off the court. He's so humble. 
uh, such a hardworking player, Def literally the definition of got it out the mud. Like I love everything that he stands for. So last night he scored 50 points in a comeback win against the Pelicans. He had 50 points, like I said, on 13 of 20 field goals. He was 18 for 18 from the free throw line, had 10 assists and six rebounds. This man is top five in the league right now. Top five. I will argue with anybody about this. Top five. He's been top five. I don't know why people are going to even try to argue this with me, but I'm open to the conversation. I'm not going to say my top five right now. We're going to save that for next week when you guys can call in and stuff so I can talk to y'all about that. But I already know y'all are going to hit my top five, but that's fine because it's my top five and Dame is in it. I know he's not in a lot of other people's top five. And we talking healthy players right now, by the way, healthy players that are playing right now. So that might alter some of y'all's top five a little bit. Doesn't really alter mine, but that's where we're going. I say what I said, that's it. We gonna come back to Dame next, next episode and talk about him. All right, cool. We done with sports. Okay, moving on to some culture. We gonna talk about the Grammys. All right, so the Grammys were on Sunday. I don't remember the last time I watched the Grammys, but you know, we've been inside. So I decided to tune in. It was kind of more of a concert than Grammys, which I kind of like that better. No one wants to watch people just say speeches for two hours. So I really enjoyed the performances. Um, it was still a little awkward, the whole virtual thing, I think. People are still working out the kinks through that. It's only been a year, but I think this is this was definitely the best award show I think that was put on um, as far as performances, the acceptance speeches, the outfits, the red carpet, all that. So I loved it. So we gonna go through the winners of the evening and not all of them, my specific winners. Like, so not the winners that won the awards, like the winners of the evening, like the winners of the night in my eyes, okay? All right, so first off we have Beyonce, duh. Queen B became the most winningest artist in history. The most Grammys out of everybody. Are we surprised? Because I'm not, because she's the queen. Also, can we give it up for little baby Blue Ivy, who is also a Grammy winner <laughs> before she turned 10. I want Blue Ivy's life because sis is doing it. She's a Grammy winner. Come on, come on, girl, pop off. So I'm really excited for them. Um, I think Beyonce is one of the greatest of all time and she deserves all her flowers and all her grammys and all her happiness and all her money and all that all right so we love that love that for her okay speaking of her her h-e-r r&b artist if you guys do not know who she is please tap in with my good sis i've been listening to her for years now and when she first came out she was like, it was like a silhouette. So you didn't even know who she was. It was just a silhouette and a voice. And I love that about her. But now she's all out and open, Grammy nominated, Grammy winner. She had a really good 2020. Obviously her 2021 is taken off as well. So I'm really happy for her. That's funny when I say her and her is the name. Okay. Um, she's just been doing the damn thing. And I'm really, I just love seeing, you know, when my artists grow because I've been there since day one and I haven't been day one on a lot of artists, but I was definitely day one with her. Okay. Um, another big winner from the Grammys, Meg the Mother Stallion, duh, period. Um, she won some Grammys last night for her song Savage. She had a rough year. We're not going to speak on her situation because we don't really know what it is, but she overcame it, came out better from it and won some Grammys. I'm really excited for her. The best part of her night though, was her performing WAP with Cardi B on national television after the uproar it caused pretty much everybody, but the, the politicians and stuff that had a lot to say about the song, that made me laugh the most. But the fact that the Grammys allowed them to perform it nationally, 
on television was just just the irony of it all. We love that. So shout out to Meg, shout out to Cardi B for WAP. I love that song. <laughs> I love the dance on TikTok. I mean, it's a bop. It's a bop. Like, I don't, dirty version, clean version, it's a bop. And we can't do nothing about it. Um, another performance I really enjoyed was Lil Baby's performance. And it was very powerful. It uh, spoke against police brutality. Um, I think he should have won some Grammys, but that's not new. You know, people getting snubbed. He got, he didn't get snubbed because he got nominated, but he definitely should have won. But you know who did get snubbed was The Weeknd, who probably had one of the best albums of the entire year. Um, I think he deserved a Grammy, at least a nomination or something. I know y'all saw him at the Super Bowl. His performance was incredible. Um, if you guys have not watched his music videos for his Blinding Lights and whatever songs were on his last album, please go do that because they are crazy. Like American Horror Story is weird. It's beautiful. It's a story. Like y'all need to go watch them. Like after you hear this, go on YouTube or go search all these music videos and you will be amazed because it's like a mini movie. It's amazing. And he deserved a Grammy. And I'm pretty sure he thought that as well. And he's over it. He's actually very much over it. He's very much tired of the Grammy. So are a lot of artists actually, now that I think about it. But what I didn't really like was the lack of, let me say, cause black women prospered at the Grammys this year. And that usually doesn't happen. Like we know this. So the the lack of support and celebration for our black queens that won the Grammys from our black kings was a little disappointing in my eyes. They were too busy complaining about them not winning a Grammy or them getting snubbed when re in reality they should have been uplifting the black queens who did win and didn't get snubbed. But we didn't see that. Are we surprised? No. Disappointed, duh, but we'll get there. We gonna get there one day. We're gonna get there one day. We're gonna keep being black queens, uplifting everybody. And hopefully the rest will follow because I'm tired of seeing it. And I think that it was a great night for black women at the Grammys. And that needs, that needed to be addressed. I'm sorry. I don't know, <laughs> that just needed to be addressed for me, okay? I'm not gonna criticize the Grammys as a whole. I'm not really well versed in music. So we all know that it's very whitewashed. The selection committee doesn't really know what they're doing or talking about right now or ever. So we're just gonna leave that there. I will give a shout out to Taylor Swift because one thing that Taylor Swift always does every year is win a freaking Grammy. And I have not, have not heard not one song from her album that she apparently made through quarantine. I didn't even know that it existed, but shout out to Taylor Swift because she has a lot of Grammys. And every year I log on to Twitter or turn on the Grammys and she's up there accepting something. So shout out to her. Good for you, sis. Good for you, good for you. <laughs> so um, it's just been really, it's been actually really nice to see, you know, artists, um, athletes, public figures, um, expressing their frustrations and their opinions about things that bother them. And I think this year was the most backlash I've seen from artists about the Grammys. And that started like months ago because the Grammys were supposed to be but like a month or two ago and they had to postpone it. So this has been like boiling up for months. So it's been really nice to see um, you know, people speaking out, you guys know me, I speak out about everything, almost everything. When something's bothering me, I usually address it, um, on Twitter though. So that's why, that's really why I brought, I wanted to do this show is because I wanted to be able to vocalize things a little bit better. I wanted you guys to be able to see me, see the facial expression, see all that. So I can have conversations with you guys as well see what's frustrating, what's frustrating you guys, what's bothering you guys, and we can talk about it. I can learn some stuff. 
I can teach y'all some stuff. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm really, really, really happy that I'm able to do this show. You saw we we covered a little bit of, you know, political stuff. Sports, we always gonna cover that. A little bit of pop culture, we gonna get into that more. I gotta, you know, start paying attention a little bit more to the tea that's going on in the in the in the entertainment industry. Um, and I'm gonna bring guests on and have people talking with me because I know that sitting here just listening to me is boring sometimes. So I'm gonna make sure to keep it interesting, keep it fun, keep it light. Um, hopefully have some jokes. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really, really excited for this moving forward. Um, if you wanna hear this as a podcast, um, just search, call me today on your favorite streaming platform. Again, just call me today. Um, that will be available everywhere. Um, this is gonna be streamed on YouTube. If you guys just wanna listen to it on YouTube, it's gonna be there. Um, I appreciate you guys so, so much. Subscribe, share, like, give me criticism. Tell me things you love, tell me things you hated. I'm really excited for this journey. I love y'all. Thank you for watching and I'm out.